Hello everyone, welcome back to Duthie Aquatics. I swear this time the mess isn't all from me. That coffee table and these boxes are not mine. I do not claim responsibility. I had this room clean, mostly. Okay, so filming in the lovely mess we have here today, I'm going to be doing a video on sword tails. I caught some in from the pond that I uh, have that's chocolate blocked full of sword tails. So there's uh, a couple of koi's as well as some actual crosses between uh, the, like a standard sword tail and the liar tail sword tails. As you can clearly see, the koi sword tails are a little bit old now, um, but they're actually quite huge. Like that female that's just swam to the back is easily the size of my index finger. Uh, the male is probably pretty close, but being the male, he's gonna be a lot skinnier. There's a few fry in there as well. Um, they're really easy fish to do. So like if you're looking for a great beginner fish or something to breed that's um, not that much of a, you know, pain and you can just kind of always set up a nice little um, display tank and I want to have something in there that I can eventually see some babies from, sword tails are a really good option because you can get so many color varieties out of sword tails. They've got the right temperament in terms of that you can have them in with like corridors and all those sorts of fish like if you want to have an actual community tank and they're just going to be a really nice showy fish that get to a pretty decent size um, these guys are probably not in the most amazing condition because obviously it's winter here now so the fish slow down outside they do survive winter here no problem like they can go down to 15 degrees celsius um, and they'll cop that absolutely no problems at all so if you've got them set in a warmer tank above 25 um, and you kind of worried about power bill or whatever between 20 and 24 degrees they're more than happy um, they will live and survive in water as cold as 18 degrees celsius but that's kind of putting them into the uncomfortable um, water temperature range so as long as it's above 20 i usually find sword tails and uh, most platies are absolutely fine with that so i'll show you some that I got from the wholesalers from for this video. This one here, oh, it's just gone behind a leaf. There's a nice little liar tail, so you can see the high fin on it, and the liar tail starting to come through, or the fork tail on the back starting to come through. The reason why, even though there are actually quite a few males in this tank that I got from the wholesaler, none of them have visible swords, and the reason for that is when they're kept in really cramped conditions in overpopulated tanks, they can be a little bit aggressive and they will actually rip at each other's fins. So you can see that one having a peck at the guppies there um, because the pattern on the tails kind of look a bit like food. And you can see it itself has got some damage to its fins as well. If I had the room, I would have had them in a quarantine tank by themselves with some methamine blue. Um, but as it happened, I didn't really have that much space. So I wanted to put them in a tank that had at least some algae for them to pick out while I was uh, not here, but I will be feeding them some concoction. You may probably know them as baby brine shrimp and uh, hopefully I'll get some weight back onto them. Um, lovely little Madoka rice fish there. Uh, you can see this one here. So this is a great example. So when they're kept in the really cramped conditions, the competition for food is quite a lot and it's very easy for disease to spread. So I'm gonna give that one the benefit of the doubt because it's quite active um, and still eating. Uh, I'm gonna see if it starts to put some weight on and then if it doesn't, I'm gonna have to pull it out and either try and treat it or uh, euthanize it because there's every possibility that it's wasting away is not due to parasites or malnutrition. It could have contract contracted um, fish tuberculosis, which if you didn't know is uh, transferable to humans and is an absolutely nasty thing to catch and I hope to never experience that because you will get uh, lesions that will uh, break out around where the site of infection has entered usually open cuts uh, and as you can see my thumb has split open from doing stuff outside so I don't have any desires to stick my hand in the fish tank anytime soon to find out um, but they have to actually cut out the lesion so you know there's always a risk when you do any hobby 
and that's this is probably the worst one that fish keepers will have to face apart from a tank failing and flooding at your house would be uh, fish TV um, but there are ways to mitigate the risk from that making sure your fish aren't stressed out is a huge one um, so obviously these fish coming from the wholesalers that were kept in um, tanks with possibly hundreds or thousands of other fish in with them so being in this tank they should be a lot less stressed and hopefully the health will get a lot better um, but that's just one thing to keep in mind when you are buying fish don't buy the ones that are wasted away um, buy ones that got this lovely body shape for the lyre tail nice round full looking body this one's colors are really nice but you can see how skinny it actually is so it's got no it's got a very oh, let's focus my finger the shape to it's quite thin if you're looking top down or, or front on you can see how skinny it is it's only got a real slight roundness to its stomach which means it's just hungry so if you feed it well you've got a high protein food and you know you can do that it'll come back to looking like a really great fish but when you're looking to buy them avoid ones that kind of like that and the one that was really skinny that was up here um, this one here is okay because it's a male you can see it's got a flat um, anal fin there it's got no sword on there because obviously like I said in really cramped conditions they get a bit aggressive to each other so you probably lost it fighting with the other fish um, you can see this one's got a nice round stomach there it's a little bit hungry because obviously I haven't fed them today but that's kind of what you're looking for you don't want to buy the skinny fish and that pineapple colored one this one here so you'll see the top of its tail fin it's right there has been pecked away and you see how it's got that slight whiteness around where the ripped fin was is possible fungal infection um, it's not too much of a stress like I am 100% sure that this is going to be fine and grow back but if you are buying fish yourself don't buy ones that have got things like that on their on their um, tails because it could be uh, I'm just you know looking fine in the aquarium swimming around at the shop but when you've gone you caught it and then it's driven home with you and then it's gone through uh, the store's water to your fish tank water it could be even more stressed and that's when its immune system will become compromised and that could be uh, the you know onset of a huge fungal outbreak for your tank that could kill everything but in this situation, because I'm not selling the sword tails anytime soon, um, I know that they will be fine. I'll add some more salt into the water. There's a couple of guppies in here that aren't looking amazing because I brought some more in from outside because there were still more guppies outside. So you can see this male here is kind of a little bit clamped and he's a little bit skinny. So I'd say everything just needs a really good feed. But um, even my guppies, <laughs> they're, they're living outside still, even though it's winter and they're getting a bit cold I'm trying to bring them in as much as I can but they breed so much outside every time I turn around there's more in the bloody ponds but that's a really nice male there um, this is not a video on guppies on sword tails uh, you you see this one has got a little bit of clamping of the fin as well so it, it is yeah you gotta look for the real small details when you're buying fish and you see how it's kind of stopping and there's a little bit of a bend in its spine and that little waddle there so it's not exactly a happy fish so you see when it goes to swim it's putting a lot of effort into that that shake as it swims that's a huge indication that it's not the healthiest fish whereas you see the male at the back there when he's swimming he's not over dramatic in his um, flailing of his body as he's swimming so it's an indication that even though it's missing the bottom sword there's no whiteness around that tip, which means it's already healing and he is a very active and strong swimmer without it being um, overly dramatic. So you know he's a healthy fish. Same as this tuxedo here, you can see how well it's swimming. So this one is also a lyre tail. You can tell by the extended fin rays. But that's what you're looking for when you're buying your sword tails. Fish that are swimming smoothly, nice coloration and active. You see this one here, one that I said was skinny, it's, it swims pretty healthy, like it's got a good swim to it, but it's just too skinny that I wouldn't recommend someone would go and buy a fish like that. So um, if you know what, when your fish store gets the orders in, you can go have a look, see what came in. You can cherry pick which ones look 
good, but my advice is usually when they, if you know what day they get their orders in, come in three days after that, and then whatever's there will be in a, should be, should be in a better condition for you to buy. Water parameters for these fish um, is the same as guppies and platies. You know, keep it between uh, 6.5 and 7.5 and they'll be happy. They're not as picky as mollies when it comes to salts and um, carbonate hardness in the water, or at least not the ones in Australia. Um, so you, they will benefit from having crushed coral in the fish tank, but you usually you'll get away with um, a lot more from them because they seem to be tough as nails most of the time. When you're trying to uh, breed them, just keep in mind that they do stay pregnant for a bit longer than platies will. Even though they look very similar and they can hybridize and have fertile off offspring compared to platies, they do seem to take a lot longer to actually reach uh, sexual maturity um, as well as give birth. I don't know um, if that's just sword tails in general or if it's um, just because we're going into, a, I keep mine in a cooler temperature, but it's been my observation when I've kept um, platies and sword tails in pretty much identical conditions in ponds and what, what have you, the platies just um, seem to grow faster than the sword tails. Where I breed my sword tails outside, you'll watch the water just jump as I come around. Yep, all those ripples, all the sword tails going for cover. Even though I'm the person who feeds them, they have such little respect for me, they just want to hide all the time. So I breed them in here. As you can see, there is a lot of cover for them. So that's a lot of uh, horn what you're seeing as older and stuff like that. Little uh, fantail goldfish and there's some paradise fish in here. So it's a bit of a thunderdome uh, sometimes because the paradise fish love eating baby swordtails. I don't know if it's gonna focus this one right there. And the reason why I have this basket in here as well is because um, none of the other fish can get into this basket, but the gaps in it are small enough that the babies can actually take refuge in there. Um, and at night, it's a good way for me to count fry because the fry will actually find their way into this basket and I can shine a torch in there and count them. When I first put the sword tails outside, it took me over three months to actually get any fry out of them. Um, and I think it's because I had to wait for the hornwort to really take off in this tank, in this pond because uh, sword tails are relentless um, in com like compared to guppies and platies at eating their own fry. They will hunt every single one of them down and just destroy them. In terms of having uh, the um, sword tails in a community tank, you can have them alongside platies because a lot of um, the sword tail strains that you actually see have already been crossed out with platies, so it's not really gonna pollute the line uh, that much more. So if you have some platies and you really like them and you're worried, oh, well, adding sword tails in, ruin it, no, it'll be fine. Generally, whoever's got the most, um, like, if you've got more platies in the tank and you add in a couple of sword tails, they're all still going to end up looking more like platies than they will sword tails, just because the most prevalent genes will be the platies. Uh, they do seem to be very genetically strong fish, same as platies, so if you... If I was to take out the two red fish in here um, and then cross them with something, most likely the, they will have a 50-50 split of whatever I cross them with, with the red. And then they seem to breed pretty true, same as platies. I mean, I'll, I'll do a, a separate video on how to breed um, sword tails and platies. It's a bit more in depth than just, I'll oh, put them in a tank with some cover and then find the fry because that's how you breed them. But if you want to, go into more nitty gritty how to uh, breed them for certain traits. Um, we, I'll do a separate video for that, same for the guppies as well, just because um, I'm sure there's probably a few people that would love to know how to set up line breeding for things and how it actually all works. You can have um, sword tails as a community fish. It works quite well. They will be fine with things that are a little bit more boisterous, I'd say, because they do get to a pretty decent size themselves um, and they're pretty strong feeders and they're always gonna make sure they're actually getting some food. Uh, if you've got an Oscar or something like that, that's quite large, obviously they are probably gonna eat them. Uh, but if you've got goldfish and things like that, that will eat guppies or endlers and stuff like that and you want something to be more of a dither in with them in the fish tank, Swordtails are usually a really good choice because swordtails aren't really 
that prone to getting eaten by your goldfish unless you've got absolutely huge goldfish in which case just wait for your sword tails to get a bit bigger and generally they're going to be too fast for the goldfish to um, actually eat so they do end up cohabitating quite well with them so in my IBCs that have goldfish quite often I will have platies uh, double duding it in there with them as well um, or sword tails so they do well in those sorts of um, environments they are great contrast so if you've got a, a green aquascaped aquarium and you want something that's really going to show its colors and not be afraid having some red sword tails in the tank it will show really nicely you can have them in with the corridors and they're not going to really annoy each other which is always good you can have them in with stuff like um bedders but don't have them in with long fin bedders just because if they do start picking at each other you want the better to be able to get away and have nice finish so if you've got like a short fin placat they'll be fine in together same as platies um, with the bedders as well uh, they were good good choices for uh, tanks with gramis as well uh, sometimes three three spot gramis can be a little bit of an a-hole and, and attack other fish but uh, sword tails are usually pretty good in with them because they uh, get to a decent size they're fast enough to get away and they um, don't get pushed around that much by other fish I wouldn't really have them in with a lot of small tetras just because they'll outcompete a lot of things for food uh, you're, if you've got a pistos and stuff like that if you've got like a big male in a, like a community tank that's a display that should be fine but if you're trying to breed a pistos because the females are so much smaller sword tails can outcompete the females for food and then you'll find um, it's just really hard to get them going together so just keep in mind that they're good community fish for things that are probably a little bit larger size like if you've got a caras they'll be great in with the caras I don't know about convict cichlids because just convicts are jerks to begin with so I, I don't keep them I have no intention of keeping them so I, I've never tried that together but I know for a lot of other things sword tails are fine for the reason why I have a lid on this specimen container that I got these sword tails in is because sword tails are quite prone to jumping if they're in a small environment so I wouldn't have them in a really tiny tank uh, like this because if they detect the water quality going down too much they are really prone to jumping um, and if they get really excited or they get spooked like you drop something or whatever that can cause them to jump as well and they are really good at jumping quite a distance away so you see these tanks here you wouldn't be uncommon to find them probably where the scissors are after jumping because that's just how strong of a jumper they are and then they flip flop around everywhere if that does happen um, and you find it on the floor just try adding them back into the water sometimes it's jer like a fish jerky strip and it's not going to come back but sometimes they are, are still all right and they'll just be a little bit sick for a few days trying to recover um, because I've had both happen I've had them jump out on a concrete outside and I didn't find them for about 15 minutes chucked them in back into the pond and they were absolutely fine then I've had occasions where you come out and you're just finding you know a, a freeze-dried fish on the ground and it's there's nothing you can do but just having a tank with a lid or a decent sized tank so that I get too spooked or the water quality is not going to go down uh, really quickly is a good way to stop them from jumping of course you can have floating plants like duckweed or azola um, or frog bit red root floaters any of those will be fine having them as a canopy on the top will also help stop them jumping as well uh, feeding they're not very picky feeders I tend to feed sword tails uh, pellets more than flake just because it gives them something to pick out for a bit longer um, I find the flake food you still end up with skinny fish if you're only feeding them flake uh, Hikari tropical pellets are usually a good one because you can get the smaller granule for them um, and they'll pick at them for quite a while and then of course if you can feed them frozen uh, bloodworm or brine shrimp or live baby brine shrimp is always good as well uh, they don't waste away like most fish do so like guppies will get skinny a lot like you can see these ones in here I need to be feeding them more because you can see how skinny some of them are getting even like I did bring some in from outside but I'm not feeding enough live food for them so they do get a little bit skinny even though I've dewormed this tank as well um, 
sword tail so he can get algae a lot better than guppies will as well so they're kind of like mollies in that regard so you don't need to feed them algae wafers but if you've got algae growing in the tank they will pick at that a lot as well I don't find that they need a minimum amount of fish so if you're going to buy um, some sword tails for your community aquarium and you're worried about them breeding just buy two males they're going to be fine they're not going to get stressed out without having other sword tails there um, if you want to breed them just buy a pair it will be enough to get them going um, if you want to buy a trio that's fine too but they don't seem to be as relentless in chasing down the females for breeding as say guppies and endlers are so you can get away with um, a bit more freedom with uh, having sword tails in, in those terms so it doesn't really matter how you want to keep them uh, for breeding I mean even if you go to the pet store and they've got the males and females in together if you just want to buy a couple of females chances are that they will be pregnant and you should get a few births out of them before they need another male to re-inseminate them so um, breeding is really easy for them they do kind of need really good hiding spots for the fry that's quite like a, a really thick um, dense area of plants or so even plastic plants decor will be really good for the fry to hide in because the, the females and the male sword tails are really good at hunting down the fry so you, this big female here would be big enough to still eat those um, sword tails there but generally when they get to about this size they get left alone by the adults that's how I keep sword tails hopefully you've learned something if you have any questions just comment down below and I'm usually pretty good at getting back to people uh, otherwise send me a message on Instagram and I'll get back to you as soon as I can <laughs>